Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Martin Blackham, from our studios in Jerusalem. Great to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. In the studio today, we have a special guest, Harry Moskov. Thank you so much for coming in, Harry, You're today. Uh, Rabbi you. Harry Moskov's written the book, The Ark Report, talking about the Ark of the Covenants. And uh, in the news, in the Jerusalem Post, there was a, a, a story that uh, ha Harry's done. It's called The Enigma of the Lost Ark of the Covenants. And I know many of you are going to find this very, very interesting. Uh, Harry Moskov was, uh, was born in Toronto, Canada, moved with his family in 2005 uh, to Israel. He's an ordained rabbi and managing director of Moskov Media Israel. He's worked as a specialist in patents and trademark law in Tel Aviv, and he's an investigative archaeologist and author of the book, The Ark Report, The Ark of the Covenants and the Tunnels of Israel, which we will be talking about today. He lectures internationally. He's been featured on I-24 News, Jerusalem Post, the Times of Israel, Breaking Israel News, the Jewish, uh, Jewish Chronicle, RTS Switzerland, Media Slovenia, ATV Hungary. And uh, it's such an interesting uh, subject, Harry, uh, yes. the Ark of the Covenant. So thank you so much for coming into the studio today uh, to talk about your book. Um, so the first, the first uh, question that I've got is uh, you're not originally from Israel. Uh, you're from Canada. So how did you... How did you move here, and wh why did you move here? Well, uh, Hal was via an organization called Nefesh Benefesh, which uh, carries a lot of uh, people, Olim, they're called, uh, people who want to make, Americans or Canadians that want to make Aliyah, move to Israel with their families. They make it easier, luckily, because there's a lot of red tape for everybody you know, who does live here. And people, and, if people uh, are watching and they were, uh, you know, they, they've uh, thought about making Aniyah, they, there's a website they can go sure, to. Sure, yeah, nbm.org, I believe, uh, dot il. There might be a dot, uh, you know, at the end there. But uh, it's a great organization, and they literally bring, I think, four or 5,000 uh, a year uh, families. People get married on the plane. Like, it was just a party, you know. It was a chartered plane. It was actually the first, I think this was 19, uh, no, 2005 when we came. And uh, so... Uh, coming on to the book, uh, the Ark report uh, that you've written about the Ark of the Covenant. How did you, so you came to live in Israel, were you interested in the Ark of the Covenant before? How did you get uh, in, into the subject? Well, I've always been interested as a child uh, in this, in the temple and uh, treasures and the Ark report uh, sort of came as a natural evolution from that. But you know what? When, I, when you were asking the question, it, it sort of reminded me of something I thought long, a long time ago that if we did move to Israel, I don't know if this, uh, if we would have done, I don't, I don't know if I would have had that inspiration. It really took moving here into the Holy Land, you know, uh, where you're inspired and everything sort of vibrates faster, you know, from a spiritual perspective. Uh, so I started that. I started doing research as a hobby. You know, I was working uh, in law at the time. And uh, even before that, when I was still to tr in Toronto, I sort of started on this, where, is the t where are the temples located? Exactly where on, on the Temple Mount. And then I discovered uh, this book called uh, In the Shadow of the Temple by Mayor Bentov. Incredible book. He was a great archaeologist. I think it's in the early 80s he wrote it. And he started talking about the tunnels underneath the Temple Mount. And so I started asking myself, you know what? If the Dome of the Rock is where the, te where the temple stood, why would the tunnels that are talked about in the Mishnah, in, in the Jewish texts, uh, where the priests, my ancestors, uh, tunneled under to go to ritual baths, etc., why would it be so far to the south? Uh, sorry, so, so far, um, I'll put it this way to make it easier. If most people hold that the temple is where the Dome of the Rock stood. Right. But if that's the case, then why did they have to tunnel so far to the south underneath to get to these baths, etc.? It must be, or it could be, a theory that maybe it's not there, in fact. So I started doing all this research. So um, just to, so that you know what uh, this is uh, all about, this, you, you've got the Western Wall where, uh, you know, it's, it's very common for tourists to come. And that's one of the retaining walls of, the, of where of Temple Mount, yeah. and then you go on to, you have to ascend to Temple Mount, which is quite tricky in itself. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, if you do ascend to Temple Mount, there's all the thing about mikvehs, which you were talking about, the ritual, which is uh, something that had to be done for, for people to ascend to Temple Mount, to be uh, pure, to go right. up there. 
they had to go to uh, the mikveh, the ritual bath, and that was further, you f they were further to the uh, south, south right. So, right, to the, uh, the southern side of the Temple Mount, uh -huh. which is where a lot of the excavations are. Actually, you could see that tunnel even today. Uh, it's, uh, not, it's restricted to the right. public, but... Is there some I mean, if you, if you go there today, if we, if we were to go uh, today, or if you are in Jerusalem and you go there, there's, uh, there are some kind of works, go I mean, not sure. digging works, but you can see uh, there's some open areas on the right-hand yeah, side of the, exactly. if you look at the western wall, right. on the right-hand side there are some, there's a whole area, isn't there? Yeah, that's called the Ophel in Hebrew. Uh, it's the Davidson Archaeological Park. And it's fascinating. Uh, I, I totally, I, you know, if you haven't been there, uh, the double and triple gates are there. And this, this tunnel is actually underneath there, uh, yeah. just to the east of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And uh, there's tunnels under there too. But all of this, you know, tunneling, I guess you could say, brought me onto the Ark, where that, that's what really got me, you know, interested. Wow, you know, uh, the Ark, according to the Rambam, Maimonides, was hidden underneath and many others uh, underneath the Temple Mount. And yeah, so I was started to, thinking. I was going to ask that. I mean, uh, is the is it written down somewhere? Uh, the last, lo you know, in sure. the in the scriptures or somewhere is it written in the writings or commentaries where the last known location of it is, yes, or is 100%. it kind of a bit vague so to protect uh, the ark? Well, it's both in a certain sense. You know, on the one hand, you have an actual an actual location which is uh, in, uh, I think it's the Second Chronicles, um, chapter 35, I believe, where King uh, Josea actually is uh, 35 years before the destruction of the first temple, of King Solomon's temple. So he actually elects to hide the ark underneath, um, yeah, in a special chamber that was actually set out for it at the very beginning, almost 400 years before that by King Solomon. It's so sort of like off-site chamber. Right. You know? so if you've just yeah. joined us, we've got Harry Moskov in the studio, and we're talking about the Ark Report, his book on the, the uh, Ark of the Covenant and the tunnels which are underneath the Temple Mount. Now, um, you know, this tunnels thing is very interesting because I've been in a tunnel, Harry, where uh, a lot of the tourists, you can go, you can, uh, when you come to Israel, you can go on uh, to this tunnel. It's the, the, the most famous one with the Western Wall, and sure. then it was... That caused a lot of um, of uh, hassle when it was originally uh, yeah. open, I believe, and all sorts of things. So there's other than that tunnel, which I know about, and there are also tunnels in the city of David, which I've been in. Uh, there are also tunnels underneath the Temple Mount. Correct. Now, is are there any diagrams or maps or anything to, or are those or those <laughs> are, are very concealed as well? Yeah, those are more concealed probably than the Ark. You know, okay. just joking. <laughs> No, actually about 150 years ago, Charles Warren, Captain Charles Warren, uh, was sent uh, by Queen Victoria, uh, actually, to find the Ark as part of the Palestine Exploration uh, Society fund. So that was when the Turkish Ottoman um, uh, were, was ruling the area. Right, right, right basically, yeah. And, uh, you know, and then the British took over. And so what happened was he ended up coming here and he surveyed he was able to survey all the tunnels, the cisterns, wow. etc. So we have those maps. They're not easy to get, uh, but you can see some of them online. And there you can actually see which cisterns. You can see uh, a lot of things that for sure we can't do, obviously, today. It's like, you know, impossible, practically, uh, from all kinds of different uh, perspectives. But I heard there was 45 tunnels, is that right? It or is, Or even yeah. more, maybe. Yes, that, that's not, true. That are not known about. That's 45 right. 45 tunnels underneath... Oh, Which it, is huge. It is, it is a huge area, and uh, I mean, uh, you would be more familiar with the with the Western Wall part of it, and then you've got it goes all the way to the Davidson, as you were saying, the yeah. Davidson Park and the, other and way the city too. of David, and then it goes to the Via other way, right? So it's so it's a it's a mass a massive area. Now, um, one of the fascinating things about the Ark of the Covenant uh, in the Bible is that. Uh, it, it seems to be something which you have to, we've got the holiness elements, but it's also very dangerous if you're not a Levite, mm. uh, and you can you read about this <laughs> in your Bible, that if you're not a Levite, to be involved with it. Uh, in fact, even in the, in the, when it was in the temple, uh, if the, when the priest came in, they used to put, I understand, they used to put a rope around their leg just in case they died, and then they would be able to, uh, to extract them without... <laughs> going into the Holy of Holies. 
unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, it's fascinating because the Ark of the Covenant, all sorts of things that happened, like there was the, the story of when it, the Philistines captured it, sure. and suddenly they had plagues and all sorts yeah. in there, and their god Dagon fell down. Right. They found him, they put him back, and they'd found him the next day. He would have fallen in, in with the Ark That's of the right. Covenants, and there was all sorts of things. It was returned, and I think it even came to Beth Shemesh. Bet Shemesh. Yeah, but, are, yeah. but I think there was an issue there with the people trying to look into it, which you can understand I would say in one more way. more than an issue. <laughs> like 50,000 people died. Yeah, wow. big issue. Wow. Yeah, it demands respect. At the same time? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Wow. It's sort of like Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, they got that part right. I don't know if the faces melted, okay? <laughs> but right. but uh, there were... Um, 50,000 people were killed in Bed Shemesh yeah. because of looking into the Ark. Well, somebody... It, it says that uh, it's, it's a controversy whether uh, it was the elders. There were seven elders that actually took the, car, the Ark cover off to see inside, which is the Ten Commandments, etc., uh, out of curiosity. And that's, you know... That's a little bit uh, like we say in Hebrew chutzpah, you know. It's not, uh, it's, a, it's not one of those things that, that's done without permission, so to speak, right. on high, you know. And, and, then, and then it came uh, to Jerusalem, and then there was another problem. There was someone, yeah. they brought Uzzah. it on a cart, and then Uzzah tried to, it, obviously, it's, you know, it's hilly. Sure. Where, where we are in the <laughs> studio, it's, it, there are a lot of mountains and hills. And it would have been difficult to bring uh, the ark uh, on, the cart. With, on a cart. And at some stage, it, it, it uh, nearly fell off or was... Well, that was part of the problem. Right. Part of the problem was that they used a cart in the first place when it should have been taken out with the staves on the shoulders. And David, King David, David Abelach, realized that afterwards. And he, he felt so badly about that that he forgot that, that law, that halacha, that... Every, every four steps that the ark would take, four which cubits actually, uh, yeah, so let's say it's six to seven steps, he would, he would stop and thank, thank God, and then do another six steps, stop, just to make up for it, as it were. Wow. But like you said, the ark is a, it's a dangerous, uh, the most dangerous vessel, the most holy, the most expensive, the most priceless, the most indestructible, you name it. Uh, and, and it's you know, you know we we we're prob you may be very familiar with the film, the Raiders of the Lost Ark and the stories yeah. there about the Ark. But I in the Bible we read that uh, in Joshua took it round. Mm -hmm. We know about the the tr the trumpets blowing. That's quite well known. Sure. And, and as they but walked around the uh, yeah, Jericho, Jericho, but what's perhaps not so well known is the Ark of the Covenant was taken round sure, the walls of Jericho. That's that's what actually that was the power seven times, uh, I mean, it took a whole week, but uh, that was the power that actually brought the, the walls down uh, with the shofars and everything. They actually took the ark and they, they paraded it, and those were huge, huge walls. There were giants I inside, it says, like people like Goliath, you know, who, by the way, was the one that stole the ark uh, when it was taken out to battle and brought it to Dagan and all these other places. But the ark was so powerful that it was like a reactor, you know, it had to walk in front of the Jewish people for almost a whole kilometer mm. uh, through the 40 years of the desert. One, one of the funny things that I, I found, you know, um, looking into the subject of the Ark of the Covenant was that it didn't have, you know, uh, with the incidents in Beth Shemesh, but yeah. it, with the Philistines, rather than them all being dead, you know, the whole kind of country, no, they as did it were. Shuba. They, they repented they, after. Right. So it's interesting. It's interesting that they were able to get the Ark onto a cart from right. their temple. They were able to send the cart away. They did offer, you're right, there was um, offerings they made to... And we still have those, by the way, wow. believe wow. it or not. They sent five golden mice because there were, there were, it, was a, it was a whole plague. Uh, they went through a, a whole bunch of times, uh, you know, Ekron and got uh, stomach disease, and they sent a gift to the God of, the, God of Israel. And um, Hashem, God appreciated it, and they sent the cattle to go whichever way they went, and they went to Beit Shemesh. Wow. And, uh, well, that was and another miracle. It could have gone anywhere. That's right. It they wanted to see. They, they, it wasn't, um, the cattle weren't, uh, you know, they weren't with the uh, controls. No, not at they, all. They, they could have wandered anywhere. That was part of the test. Wow. The reason I mention all of these things about, you know, uh, the ark and, the, the, uh, you know, the respect and that it's important, um, 
not just to be respectful, but, you know, to observe what God has said. And God very clearly said in the scripture that we should, you know, it should be carried by the Levites. And there were certain ways on poles. It wasn't just any old how. Right. And there was a, a, a whole thing for them uh, to do. So why I'm saying all of that is that nowadays, uh, you know, in the age that we're living in and, and with your book, uh, The Ark Report and finding, finding the Lost Ark, isn't yeah. it? a bit, uh, you know, isn't it um, problematic? Because if they're not, le if we did find the ark or someone found the ark, if they're not Levi's, well, that's or, the thing. Or, 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 or coming with respect or whatever, something happens. In fact, you've got, there was this, you've, you, there's very, inside the book you've talked about uh, the, the quest of Rabbi Yehuda Getz, who was, sure. that's who a good was example. Uh, this is underneath the, the Temple Mount yeah. in the tunnels. and. What, what happened to Yehuda Getz? Well, he, he actually was a Levite, but he wasn't a priest. Right. Uh, you know, my ancestors were priests, actually. Maybe that's part of why I'm so interested in this. And my mother and my father and my wife, everybody is around me. But, uh, you know, he, in order to go and get, go actually go after the Ark, as it were, there are a couple conditions. Uh, one of them is, you know, you have to go to ritual bath, of course. You have to be a priest with a with a, a heritage, lineage, that's proven that goes all the way back to the Second Temple, which is not easy to do. And did you um, have to wear certain clothes? Or yeah, that, there's priestly, right? now, there's a, it's, it's sort of a dispute amongst the Jewish sages whether that's necessary or not, but ideally it is preferable. Um, you have to, you know, obviously be prepared for, for going down there, but it is very dangerous. Even before Yehuda Rav Getz went down there, he wrote a letter to the Lubavitch Rebbe, which was a big sage, uh, at the time in New York, and uh, wanted his advice, you know, because it was a real miracle. Like after the '67 war, and this has to do with Rabbi Gorin also. So did he? Did, so he did he have maps, or did he? Was he so, just um, just exploring? Well, well, he 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 had a relative idea. He went to Warren's Gate, which is one of the gates of the Western Wall Tunnel, and he he saw some water coming out, uh, which was a cistern. I think it's number thirty. And he started uh, going in there and, and uh, breaking down the wall, as it were. It wasn't such a big wall. Uh, it's one of the old entrances to the Temple Mount two, from 2,000 years ago. It's still there today. You can see it. Wow. Uh, now, wow. of course, it's all covered up. Right. But uh, he decided to go in after it, even though the Rebbe said it's very dangerous and your life is at risk. And he was suggesting not to do it. Because, uh, you know, when you take the Ark or something like that, or any, maybe any temple vessel, of that type of holiness, you have to be you have to be careful, you know. So was he? What well, do you think he was going there to just to look at it, or was he going there oh, he wanted, to collect it? He wanted to collect it because wow. it says uh, Nachmanides Ramban writes that the person who gets the ark uh, in particular will that'll bring on the Messiah. That'll bring on the. It'll be a catalyst. So he wanted to. He was prepared. He says to even sacrifice his life to go in after it, even though these big rabbis are warning him, saying, and he himself was a big rabbi, he was a big ka Kabbalist, a mystic, Rosh Hashiva. So, uh, but he decided to do that, and he actually, I have an interview on my YouTube channel uh, that actually shows that he went in there, and he says with Rabbi Gorin, uh, who was the chief rabbi of a lot of the holy places in Israel at the time, he waited about 15 years after the Six-Day War, when Israel had access. And he says he saw the glittering, he saw the gold there, he saw a whole bunch of... Uh, so was there other things as well as the Ark, or is it just the Ark itself that's in this area? Uh, well, in that particular chamber, it's just the Ark. Right. Right. But um, it says in another place, in the Gomorrah, uh, in the Talmud, that the, the t certain parts of the tabernacle are also buried underneath the Temple Mount, which wow. is very interesting. Yeah, the boards of the tabernacle, uh, tabernacle and the courtyard... Uh, you know, the different uh, curtains, etc. So that's under there in a different spot. Wow. So he was able to go in, but when he came, it was uh, Teddy Kalik, who was the mayor at the time, tipped off the press, and uh, oh. it, which was not a great idea, but he was a very left-wing, and I don't know. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that that's what happened uh, historically. And so the Arabs found out, and he barely made it out. Like oh, he right. was lit, you know, could have been lynched. Like, like, a, like a riot happened. A riot, yeah. Right. And it happened right. again in 1982 and um, 1991 after the first Lebanon war. There was a, a, a tour group that I interviewed myself that went under there and tried to do the same thing. 
actually went through and started being, doing a rate to, before Shoshana. This Shoshetta. is using Warren's Gate, which yeah. was available at that, at that time. At that time, yeah. At that time, actually, we were mentioning before that uh, they were, du they were uh, digging the tunnel, extending it to Via de la Rosa, northward, the Western Wall Tunnel. So during that, there was all kinds of utensils and tools and stuff lying around. And uh, at 12 o'clock at night, when it, the, the Jews uh, above were preparing for Rosh Hashanah, where there's a lot of, you know, praying and yelling and, you know. So they actually went and they, they got through and no one heard. And this incredible thing happened uh, that I have in my book. The, uh, the floor, the ground started trembling like a mini earthquake. And it didn't stop. And they stopped in their tracks. And, and they were like, what do we do? And it, and it kept on trembling. I, this is what he told me. Uh, there were about 10 people on this tour. And uh, eventually they, they went back out and they said, you know what, we're going to call some of the, the rabbis and, and see if, it, if it's time yet. So they said, uh, one, one of the rabbis said, yeah, go ahead. You know, help bring the geula, help bring the redemption. The other one said, don't. And, and they didn't know what to do. They called uh, another big rabbi, the Slavov Rebbe, uh, and he said, don't. So they, they withdraw, and, and the tremors stopped. And they also were almost lynched. Wow. They, uh, they barely got away with their lives. It was a huge wow. riot. Yeah, because they were all spotted. Yeah, because what people, you know, before you, you buy yourself a shovel and come to Israel, <laughs> there's, there's huge amounts of issues. There's, there's the... Politically. In, in, yeah. Right. And even if, we, wherever you dig in Israel, you have to get permission, I understand, from the uh, Israel uh, Antiquities yeah, yeah. Right. Authority. You have to get um, permission from them. On Temple Mount, you'd have to get permission as well from the, the Muslim, walk. from Jordan and the Muslim Waqf and, and the all the authorities. Too. And then you'd have to get... Permission, and by the time you get all these permissions, I don't think you You'll would be ninety, uh, ninety four. Right, right. Which is amazing, really, because it's in a in a kind of a strange sort of a way. It's um, it's it's hiding the art because with right. all these it's different, it it, right? This is very interesting. Yeah, I should say if people want to get in touch or more information, they can check out the website as well. Uh, it's www.harryhmoskoff.net, and there's an address there. Anybody is welcome to it. It's available at Barnes and Noble, you know. Uh, and I thank you for for the offer to be here. You're doing incredible work. Uh, people like you that we need so badly now to strengthen Israel in face of, you know, UNESCO and all these other places. These uh, the PA, everybody that wants to take away these holy spots. So my work does that. It strengthens it. And, and your what you do here at First Israel and uh, with your TV. You know, thank you very much, Martin. Thank I you. Appreciate thank it. you, Harry. Appreciate that. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Shalom, dear friends. Today we are looking at a very special name, which is friend. And in Hebrew, there is many words, so we are going to look at them, and and you will see that every one has a different meaning. So the first one that we know usually that we hear very often is chaver. So plural will be Chaverim. Now there is another one which is called Yadid. And when you look at the name, it's Yad Yad. It's like you can read it Yadid or you can read it Yad Yad. So it's like two hands coming together as friends are kind of join hands together. There is another one also which is Aluf, which is again France, but it means also general. And it's from the first uh, letter of the alphabet, which is Aleph. So it's like the one who stands with you and is the champion. Okay, there is another one also which is called Amit. Again, very interesting, this one, Amit, is like the one who is walking with you. Like you can see at the beginning of Amit, Am, and Am means nations, or also is you, because there is different way uh, of saying the thing, is also Im, which means with. So you see, it's your friend who is walking with you. It's, it's amazing to see how many names are, <laughs> are in, in the Hebrew language just for friends. There is a beautiful one also, which is not used so much, but it's like, again, very special. It's called Ish Shlomo. Ish means man, and Shlomo, you know, you can hear the name like Shalom. So he's the one who walk with you, you know, he's like an old friend and he's standing with you all the time and there is peace between both of you. And so there is also name Dod, also Dodi means like he's my friend, he's my beloved. 
but it's, it's also the connection of friends. And uh, you can see it in the beautiful passage in Song of Songs, which is Annie le Dodi ve Dodili, which is I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. So you see it's against something strong. Now, you know that Abraham was called the friend of God. And so I looked at the things and there is not written Haver, but is written in few places, uh, one in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 7, and he said, Abraham, O Avra, because it's like, like for you. So it's O Hev, the name friend, but it's O Avra because it's your friend. So he said that Abraham is the friend of God. And there is another beautiful one also in Isaiah 41, where is God himself who is speaking and saying, Abraham is my friend. So it's written, Abraham o havi. Okay, and the E at the end means like mine. So o havi. So you can see that, that Abraham was not just a haver, he was a lover of God because he comes from the verb o have, like ani o have otra, I love you. And this is from that. So isn't it amazing? Abraham was a lover of God. And this is like very, very strong. Now we look at a few words together. So many names for friends. We can just look at a few. We, we look at the haver, uh, the friend, which is the one who is used very often. You have also yadid, you have dod, and you have aluf. And we look again at Abraham, who is ohev. He is that Abraham or heavy, he is my friend and he's God speaking about Abraham. Isn't it amazing? We can be a friend of God. See you next week. Bye. Well, thank you so much for joining us today as we've looked at the Lost Ark of the Covenant with our special guest, Harry Moskov. Don't forget to email us. We love to receive your emails. Email info at israelfirst.org. Visit the website www.israelfirst.org. And remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people, and the language. Mm -hmm.